Hey, this is Andrew. Um, I'm going to be working on the scalability issue 63, which is a corrective action from the incident that we had yesterday. Um, basically, what happened yesterday was that we, um, sorry, basically, what happened yesterday in the incident was that we had a, a huge glut of project export jobs that got created. Um, and those jobs jobs were firstly writing to an FS server, um, and then we had some API endpoints that, totally unrelated to the project export jobs, were using the same NFS server. Um, and so that machine was put under load, everything slowed down, and so we got this connection between project export jobs and CI traces. And because the export jobs were putting saturation pressure on the NFS servers, the um, the CI trace jobs uh, escalated to about five times the normal latency. Those jobs already take about uh, 60 to 70% of all compute CPU in our API fleet. And so when they started each taking five times longer, what ended up happening was that the API fleet got very saturated and that started causing lots of latency and queuing in other places. Cases in our application saw major slowdowns throughout the application. So we got a bunch of alerts. We, the first alert we got was for API uh, latency issues. Um, but what would have been really good is if we could have got some forewarning on the NFS latency issues. Um, so we've got a capacity planning framework that we use, and it tells us how things grow over time. Hey, Marin. Hey, Andrew. I, I, uh, I was just um, explaining what I'm going to be doing to myself. But nice. I, um, so, yeah, so we have a, a, a resource monitoring framework. Um, and the resource monitoring framework gives us like long term trends and saturation. And, and what we've done is we've kind of abstracted the idea of saturation. So it could be Utilize it could be the number of sidekick workers uh, that we have. It doesn't really matter. It's just a saturation metric. And then we take a look at it over time and we see how much variance there is in the metric and what direction it's growing. And we use that to predict whether we get our problems. And obviously, the other thing we get out of it is that for any saturation metric, when it reaches a, a threshold where it's too high, um, we can uh, alert on it. And, but yesterday, we didn't get any alerts for any of the NFS servers. Yep. So the, the first thing is we don't really know what it was on the NFS servers that was slowing down. Mm -hmm. Obviously, something was saturated, but it could have been the, the disks on those machines. It could have been the CPU on those machines. Mm -hmm. uh, Job said it might even be the network, although GCP claimed that their network is infinitely scalable. Mm -hmm. Uh, it would be nice if I can prove that that's not the case, but um, let me see. So I'll share my screen. Sounds good. Um, okay, should be shared. Just move I can screen. see it. Um, so I guess the first thing that I'm going to look at is let's go and take a look at host stats, which is a, a dashboard that we've got. Um, and you can, it's, it's a templatized dashboard, so you can give it any machine in our fleet uh, from this pull down, and it will give you a bunch of statistics about the machine. At the moment, we don't keep this in the format, but um, so let's have a look. So I'm going to go look for share share one is probably the best machine to look at here and we want to look over the past two days because the, the incident that we we're looking at was yesterday right wow so yeah so kind of one of the things that's kind of interesting here is that cpu was only up to 
25%. So one of the things that that could mean is that it's a four core machine and one of the cores was pinned. So I can't imagine, oh, well, there we go. We know it's a, it's a eight core machine. So let's just look at this. So every then, core, huh? pardon me? Every core, it seems to be uh, equally affected. Yeah, it doesn't look like, so, I mean, we saw more CPU, but it never really got beyond 20, 25%. And certainly for user mode, there was nothing extra. And this one is more, but it's so, so small. It's like um, very, very, but it, it definitely seems to, interestingly, that definitely affected CPU 6, which I don't really understand. Um, I'm sure Matt Smiley could give me some interesting details as to why that is, but I'm not sure. So the second thing we have is, this right, so, so this could be the problem here, right? Uh -huh. so we look at disk throughput, bytes per second, and uh, SDB write, wow. and this to me is like a classic saturation signal, like when it goes up like that and it's, it's got like a plateau, like a rooftop. value like this you can see it's spiking but it's not it's not clipping and so that's probably read through but it's probably not clip, uh, saturated but write through but could be so that's kind of interesting and that could be the thing that we need to put saturation on um, and then network we see the same pattern but obviously once you hit a bottleneck in one thing you know you're going to see that pattern reflected in all the downstream elements and so you know on receive we could only receive at a certain rate and yep. if, that was, if the disk was was uh, limiting it then obviously we'd see the same pattern there so the next thing i'd be interested in looking at is actually the um the claimed throughput on google console for that disk on that machine idea of, of what the disk throughput um, will be. Andrew, could you check your uh, connection because you seem oh, okay. to be off dropping out. Okay. Um, I might, uh, uh, let me just see if I can, okay, I'll be one second. Sure. And I will share my screen again. Uh, just have one. There we go. Okay. So what I was interested in looking at was the disks, the the disk utilization, or the what what GCP claim we should be able to get through on that disk, and then we can tell whether the problem is uh, was in fact disk saturation. So. Uh, Ironically, the search doesn't always work amazingly well. So I'm just going to reload this whole page. Um, the, the other thing, just thinking out loud, that we could do is if we threw more CPUs on that machine, um, we could possibly get more disk throughput and on, on the NFS servers. Uh, which would help us. Yes, 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 yes. But isn't that um, 
a bit of an overkill for a problem that doesn't appear often? Yeah, it, it, uh, well, you see, this is the thing that's, that I really love about building up the saturation framework, is we don't actually know where we are at the moment. So we could be skirting along like five IOPS per second lower than the, the threshold, and this just, just gently nudged us over the other side. And you know, with these saturation threshold limits, it's always chaos when you, when you, when you exceed them. You know, we had CI logs failing, we had API failing, all because of, of a disk that we beat up for project exports. Um, so shared-01. And it was SDB was the name of the volume. Um, so while I'm trying to figure that out, I'll just go look in monitoring. Um, So looking at the disk sizes, it's probably that one over there. Share one. Right. So these are the limits that we've got. 15,000, 15,000, and 800 and 400. So as a comparison on our Giddily nodes, this is 60,000. 30,000, so four times as much, twice as much. This is 1,200, so 1 1.5 times, and this is 800, so twice. So, right, but we, we are much... right, but we, we shouldn't be comparing them, right? No, 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 no. But, but just as yeah. a, as a yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, sure. It's not like we expect this to be a giddy node. Yeah, because up until like last night, we expected that we have like almost no workload on it, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and that's and and that was my understanding as well. Mm -hmm. um, it was my understanding as well, so that's why I was uh, so surprised. So, but let's go look over. Even one day would be good. So this is disk re ah right. So that makes sense, though, right? Yeah. Because we had just, the abuse that continuously, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here we can see disk write is like 300, wow. it's peaking at about 320 megabytes per second. If we look here, right, it says 400, but mm -hmm. I think what this shows us is that actually the limit is a little bit down on that. Maybe there's overhead. Obviously, the other thing we should take a look at is, um, Let's add another metric. Speed bytes, um, IOPS. Uh, right operations per second. Now that looks like redshift. Maybe the easiest way to do this is to go back to here. And look at monitoring. This doesn't have a monitoring link on it, does it? No. So uh, this uh, might be kind of useful to the Google Cloud product managers to see how people use their product as well. Um, share one. Okay, so disk IO operations, that's the one that we want. Mm 
Let's look at one day. See, I mean, that's kind of interesting to me. Like, that is, oh, is this some? Uh, let's just say, because I guess this is across all the drives, and what we want is we want uh, uh, project ID, instance ID. Can we not aggregate? Is there a way that we can just say don't aggregate none? Right there? Because that's summing the IOPS for all the disks, and what have we got here? I don't even know what that means. I'm not very, oh, it's loading graph data. See, but what's surprising to me is that this is not that far off. You know, this, this, okay, so this is right. And I don't know if that's right across all the drives, but I'm guessing it is. Just right operations. But it's like 2,000 IOPS, right IOPS a second. And if we go back to here, okay. So it's 15,000, 15,000, I was thinking in the wrong. So, you know, we kind of went up but it wasn't anywhere yeah, close to the limit. Yeah. So the limit that we hit was um, on, on, on this right throughput. So, so GCP have a formula that you can use to basically calculate the IOPS for a disk and it's, it's got like a lot of variables. And I spent about, two or three hours trying to express that formula as a PromQL query. And it, there was missing data and it, it just wasn't possible. But obviously for Giddily, it's critical that we don't hit right throughputs. And if we do, we have to move projects off the machine. And so what I ended up doing for Giddily, and this is why I know what those values are off by heart, is that we hard coded those values into our saturation metrics. So for all of our saturation metrics, we say it's between zero and one, where one is saturated. And so for right throughput, um, we know that one is uh, full, we'll use the stated number that they use, which is 400 um, megabytes um, per second. And then we'll put a, a saturation threshold at about, I don't know, 70% or somewhere, we'll work out what the right number is. But like, so that when we get to there, we get alerts. And also, like not that I expect this to happen because I don't expect the, um, us to be using NFS for much longer. But if this number grows over time, we'll get alerting on, on yeah. the trend. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to the Runbooks project. Um, Okay. Um, and I'm pretty much going to take the, the way that we do this for Giddily and I'm going to replicate it for uh, what we have here. So, ah, and this is what I was doing yesterday before I decided to join the call. And I didn't even save my work. Um, so there's a file called saturation, uh, service saturation YAML. And just because I'm lazy, I'm going to search for 60,000. And here we go. 
So we, uh, we've got some sort of explanation of what we're doing here, but basically we're saying when the rate at which we are reading from the disk divided by 60,000 is greater than one or is tending towards one, we'll, we'll report that. And so let's start off with these, these two. Interestingly with Gidley, we never come close to these 60,000 and 30,000 numbers. But on, again, on right, in the same way that we saw here, if somebody's doing abusive things on a Gidley server, we actually see right saturation yep. on single machines quite often. So that's interesting that it's, it's right. Actually, I was wrong. It is 400 megabytes per second for Gidley as well. Um, I don't even know what these machines are called, so I'm just going to go and look it up in what the tier and the type of these uh, share machines is. The machine's getting a little bit roasty as well. Um, Okay, so ah, okay. So this is a little sort of side project that I've been pinging, in particular Anthony and um, Ben has been helping out as well, but. What we have is we have a label on things called type, and type represents a service. And so yesterday, when we had things failing, it was the type equals API, um, type equals sidekick. And then from that, we have a dashboard for each service slash type. And there's like a lot of stuff in our system that is outside of that. And because of that, it actually lacks a lot of observability. So we have, um, and I, I was vaguely wondering about this, we have alerting on CPU, but we only do that for machines that have a type. Um, we have a whole bunch of alerting, but there's a bunch of stuff that doesn't have types, and um, you know, we should fix them all, basically. Like everything should be, every service in our, every server in our fleet should fall into a specific service and not be like this, which is just sort of some random machine, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of hack this because um, I need a way of recognizing these machines. And so I'm probably going to use the fully qualified domain name to, to, say, to select the machines. But then once we add a types onto these machines, we can, we can fix it in a better way. So let's go take a How much work is that? It's very quick. It's just a chef repo change. It's just adding the labels to chef to tell it that when Prometheus scrapes this machine, it must automatically add this type label. Um, the other place. So, that, so why don't we do it right now? Um, we could. I don't know. How Instead to do of it. hacking things, just like roll it out. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, we, oh, sorry. Did you say? I uh, do it. Yeah. Just do it. Okay. Um, it's going to take two minutes extra, but... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually sure. I'm, I know rough... I'm just trying to think what... Uh, so Ben did a kind of recently for monitoring. Uh, so the, another type of machine that didn't have this information on it was all of our, ironically, all of our Prometheus boxes. So they were <laughs> kind of like in a monitoring black hole. <laughs> and uh, Ben fixed that. So nice. here, I'm guessing that this is the right thing that I'm looking for. Um, that looks pretty promising. So default, uh, default attributes. Okay. And then the second thing we need to find is uh, uh, what's it called? Share dash a one. Uh, 
Um, okay, so my, my chef knowledge is not amazing, but to me, it looks as though the share box doesn't have a role in chef. Oh. I don't know. It, it, it's fine. It's, it's role is like a base storage machine. Not, you know, and the base storage machine is also... It's also shared for others. And and yeah. Everything. So I think I can do this. As I said, I think all we need to do is that. But I will create a merge request for that. And then we need a name. I guess the name sure, would be shared. Or that's whatever. Like, yeah. And this is store. Um, What is the difference between that and that? Uh, maybe, maybe uh, I take that back. Look, that's an old, okay, so I was thrown. This is an Azure box. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm pretty sure that represents um, the old naming schema that we used in Azure. But again, this, this isn't, so this looks much better because there we have this guy. So mm -hmm. this so maybe, there we go. This is what we want. Um, so yeah, let's, let's put this in here. If it's gonna take uh, much longer, um, like no, you can ignore my, but like it should be like pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, the only question I really have now is do we call this um, share or NFS? Let's just quickly check what else has got this uh, name on it. Mm -hmm. So the only box that's got it is, is share. Um, although, you know what? If, if I'm thinking about a service name, like what is the name of the service? NFS is super obvious. Like the NFS service for GitLab. So yeah. I'm going to just make a call and um, that is store. So thanks for pushing me to do that. Cause I always <laughs> ping people. I'm like, can you do this? And then it takes weeks. Yeah. And actually it's so easy to do. Um, so we will just, uh, I'll, I'll commit that um, in a second. Um, And so just because we've added these labels on here, there's a whole bunch of stuff, uh, Prometheus report, uh, recording rules that explicitly exclude anything that doesn't have a label. So this is actually going to fix a whole bunch of other stuff and add a whole bunch of other reporting and alerting as well. Um, it's funny, I saw a guy the other day tweeting about the get push, copy paste thing that I always do. <laughs> I like, I know I could figure that out, but it's just easier to be told by Git. Okay. And uh, while I'm doing this, oh, so slow. Um, Three nine three four four nine. It's good. The Microsoft Authenticator is oh, no, I can't get it. Oh, Microsoft Authenticator is awesome. 
because if you ever change your phones, you can get the QFAs from one phone to another. Backed up? So oh, that's nice. In the cloud. Pardon? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, that's what I miss from uh, Google Authenticator. Yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. Mm. Um, okay, so who should I assign this to? Um, Jarv is working. Assign it to Jarv. Ask him in. Cool. So now that we've got that, we don't have to do hacky stuff on our run books, um, which is much better. So uh, we can say here type equals NFS. Um, and then I'm going to use, I'm going to get a link to that disk again so that I've just found having that link really useful um, when, uh, like I was talking to Matt Smiley about it the other day and he, um, and it was just great having a link to where I got the data from. So I'm going to check that into this comment here. There's actually um, another thing that uh, I was working with uh, Henry on, where unfortunately at the moment these values are hard coded, and then we need to replicate that hard coded value in other places, mm -hmm. and so it's horrible. And that's because this is YAML. But one of the other things I'm doing is moving all of this across to JSON it. And so at least for all of the others, they are in one place in JSON it. And eventually this will be generated from JSON it as well. So but for the moment we've got to do this. So type equals NFS. Um, and I think everything else here would remain exactly the same. Now, one of the things is that we've got the sustained disk write throughput and the sustained disk read throughput. And that's, if you have a saturation metric, at the moment, the way we do it is there's only one, or there's, there's two SLOs, but whatever reports those things has the same SLO. So uh, I'll, it's probably easier if I explain this with um, saturation SLO. So at the moment, we define this as 80% and 90% are the two values. And, and now because we're reporting a disk sustained read, through, read throughput and disk sustained write throughput from Giddily and NFS services, um, both of them will be 80% and 90%. And that is, um, I think what we, what we noticed though, was that if you take 80% of the 400, well, we know what it is, 320. 320, yeah. And 320 is just about just around. Yeah. So what I suspect is that we actually want to lower both of these because we yeah. might find that th there's no proof that Giddily will be any different. Um, so, I mean, the only worry actually, well, what we can do is for Giddily, we can go look at the graphs and see what we see because I don't want to get anyone getting alerts when they. Don't want them. So on our Giddily dashboards, interesting, what's that? A disk, disk usage. We can go down and there's this new panel called saturation details, which is super useful. And this breaks down the saturation. It generates charts according to your saturation for each of the resources that you're monitoring in this fleet. So this is the one, and we're gonna do this over, actually let's just zoom in so that we don't hurt. Oh, that's IOPS, I beg your pardon, I'm looking for throughput. So you can see that we do occasionally sort of peak a bit. So let's take this over two days. So there you can see the dotted line is the current so the soft target and the red line is the, is the hard target. So we get these spikes that are over, but I don't think any of them last for five minutes. 
Um, in fact, I'm just going to do this over a week. I think we should bring them all down, yeah. Uh, and then I'm just gonna quickly hack this. There's one other thing I wanna check. And that is that the resolution, I'm gonna increase the resolution to see if there are more spikes. And the reason why I'm doing that is that with these spikes, it'll often be very, very steep and if you've got a one and three resolution, basically the way you can imagine that is each um, data point represents three pixels. So when the re resolution is one, then each data point represents uh, one pixel. So effectively you're loading a pixel per, well, a data point per pixel. And so sometimes if you've got very spiky data, that will round it out enough that you actually lose the spikes. But you can see here that it hasn't made it a lot more spiky, so that's fine. Um, so let's bring this down to 70% and we'll bring this to 80%. Read throughput, and then I'm gonna do the same on write throughput as well. I'm gonna say that this will be 70 and this will be 80 because they might be being a little bit optimistic on, on what they're reporting on, um, on GCP. So going back to this, um, the actual numbers when these numbers have been copied. So let's go in here, add in here. And we want it to be 800 and 400. Um, so let me just double check. 800 for read and 400 for write. So this is write, so this is 400, and this is 800. 400, 800. And I'm just gonna check. So one of the things that I'm gonna check is that this actually works. Although we know that it's not gonna work because type equals NFS won't select anything. Yeah. No, but it's fine. We can we can fix that. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take it to Prometheus um, because this is a node exporter thing, and that goes to straight Prometheus. And So at the moment, that's telling us that it's 8%. So let's go take a look over two days. And that, that's like a really good signal, right? Like that would have alerted us to this problem. We would have got saturation on, on that disk. And you can see that there are these spikes, but I suspect that if you zoom in, those are like, um, Maybe we should just zoom in because I don't want to get like a bunch of alerts in this. So until is Tuesday, um, let's call it 2000. And I'll just do this two hours. So, so this basically lasted for 20 seconds. So we wouldn't have got an alert on that. This one definitely wouldn't have alerted. Although we had 75%, so let's just check. It's actually from there to there. Oh, yeah, and Jarv's already pointed out that I didn't fix staging in the same way. So this is why we get the professionals to... Yep. That's yeah. why I didn't want to press approve as well. I don't know anything about. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, with me, it's amateur hour. So, um, cool. So, but I mean, this is really good. So we, we know that, like, we wouldn't have gotten an alert. But I'm actually curious, like, what happened on Tuesday? I wouldn't be surprised that actually what had happened was a, was a precursor to what we saw yesterday. But... Um, as in, try it out to see uh, if it clicks. Yeah. 
So, or, or somebody just accidentally like ran a whole bunch of project exports. We don't really know now, but we do have, so we've got this metric. So this is good. Did I, did I take the other two as well? No, I didn't, I, I've only got the throughput ones. I will add the IOPS ones as well, just to, um, just to be comprehensive. Although, as I said before, they're not really as, um, they're not really as helpful because we never get anywhere close to them. But, you know, the next, the next incident, maybe we will. Like millions of tiny rights. Um, And this is where I was talking about the magic numbers. So whenever you change this number, you need to change mag magic numbers dot lips on it, which is like values that we can't calculate that are magic numbers. Um, and I'll add that in there in a second. Um, but this is this. And in this. And those values are so let's go and update magic numbers dot lips on it. So, yeah, I'd really like to be able to get this direct from uh, from an exporter, but we can't at the moment. If we could get this direct from like a node exporter or some sort of GCP exporter, we could do it literally across the entire fleet. So we wouldn't have to have these specific cases. We could just say, when any disk on gitlab.com is, is saturated, like give us an alert. But because at the moment there's this expense of, of maintaining all of these things, um, we just do it in the most cycled places. Um, Manifest disk. So this is. It's hundred megabytes, and this is four hundred. Cool. Now the last thing that we need to do is, um, one of the things we have is if you go take a look in Slack. We have these alerts, and if we go take a look for saturate here. So here's a saturation alert, and basically this says nodes, uh, single node CPU has exceeded uh, its capacity. And what that means is that there's there's a single machine out of the Gitlin 40 machines that's basically running at like 95% CPU, and and we should figure out why because it's not good. Um, and so when I click on this, sorry, for how long, uh, in that case, it was, um, well, the, the, the trigger is five minutes. Um, but if I go take a look here, it is see, it, seven minutes, apparently. Yeah. If you go look at the bottom here, I always send another graph when the, when the, uh, when it's resolved. Mm -hmm. So that's always useful to look at because you can kind of see how long but actually in this case, well, so let's do this too now. Other thing to note is, is when you click through from here and it gives you this graph, it's very important to notice that the time frame is from when it's from six hours before the alert started happening until when the alert fired. And so this isn't now. So some people look at this and think it's now. It's not. Um, so let's just change this to custom time frame. To now, um, so there you can see it was for yeah. You said seven minutes, but now the the problem is that this is this is what we use for alerting. It's just saying like someone in the Giddley fleet is is not happy, but this doesn't really help um, like an operator that much. 
the bottom here, you can see there's this thing. For further details, select the saturation detail menu from the links menu at the top of the dashboard, then select the detail dashboard. You probably could do with a bit of editing. But what you've got to do, saturation menu. Now we know that this is the single node CPU uh, metric. Click on that. And this graph will give us the machine that's misbehaving. So this like instantly chops down the amount of work that the operator needs to do. Because instead of going and looking through the fleet and trying to figure it out, they just, they go to this graph and here it is. To file it, file it to, big surprise. Um, it's basically pinned at 100% CPU. And so that's bad. And so just having this graph really helps people. And the other place that we use all of these graphs, I already kind of showed you earlier, if you go to the Gitterly dashboard. But is five minutes really enough for us to get an alert? As in, what kind of operations will Gitterly on that node have that will require it or that would pack a CPU for five minutes? Um, Generally, like if we take a look at that, I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, if it's an n plus one. So it's a lot of a lot of small operations. Um, often it comes from Sidekick. So that's we can we can dig into that a little bit if you want. Um, there's a thing called per host. Uh, this dash three metrics per host. All of these need to come into Grafana or Grafonet. Um, but this is one of the old ones. Um, By the way, Jar rolled out the change. Oh, cool. You know, so there, this is kind of the, the load that we saw on that machine. Um, I think that dotted line is the number of cores. So obviously if the load kind of exceeds the number of cores, it's not great. Um, but what I'm looking for is GRPC method invocations. And so there it is. And it's list commits by OID. So this is something we've, we've looked into. Like list commits by OID is... LFS. Um, pardon? LFS, right? No, I, I think it's a merge, it's merge request controller. I'm pretty certain that's doing it. Um, and I suspect that it's, it's the widget. So when, uh, you know, and, and the worst part is that we actually lose some of the observability because if it's polling and it's cached, we're not seeing those uh, log messages at the moment. But yeah, so this is probably, Maybe a lot of people in the company looking at the same merge request and maybe somebody pushed something and all of the widgets started updating and because of um, race conditions, they all kind of start fetching from the cache again. Uh, and I would guess it's something like that. But like there's a whole sort of thing that we need to look into what's going on with that. And, and the other thing is that gitlab.com uh, sorry, uh, GitLab or GitLab is like 10 times the traffic of any other repository with that list commits by OID. So there's something about us and that repo, and it's not a general thing, but um, kind of interesting anyway. Uh, this, is, this, uh, this, this is all old and broken. I kind of want to fix this, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so, so anyway, going back to here, uh, what we had was we have these detail uh, metrics and then we have um, that, that we, we use to create these saturation detail panels here. And so this is the general Giddly dashboard. You know, we've got the key metrics for the service up at the top here. And we also have those in like more detail. Um, let me just fold these up under here. But then the, the, the saturation detail really often helps with figuring out what's going on. And so one of the things that we need to check is that this graph is going to be okay. So actually that's gonna be fine because we're using the same resource metric. What I do wanna do though is take a look at where this 
is being used to make sure um, we're not using it anymore. Saturation of detail. Yeah. Oh dear. That's the problem. So ah, that's a problem. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to figure this out. It's not. It's so the problem is the saturation detail node because we have to re recast the, the the metrics that we're using um, with different aggregators and so that we can see individual nodes without aggregating them up. We divide by the magic number. But the problem is that because previously, I know how to fix this. I, this is a bit of a horrible hack, but I can fix this. So I can say, um, don't look now, but this will probably work. Um, and we can say type equals NFS and then NFS. And so this will give us, for the Giddily nodes, it'll divide by the Giddily number and for the, um, for the NFS nodes, but it'll only ever show one of them because this selector over here will be where type equals Giddily or, or whatever. Or, yeah. or, um, and so this should work. Uh, let's go through all of these and do this then. Uh, So all of those comments as well. Um, Type equals in the Okay, I think that covers it. So um, the, the last thing I'll do, but it's pretty boring, is I will, once we have that, did you say that change was rolled out, that job? Did job yeah, push he, he pushed it out, he said. Okay, cool, that's awesome. Um, let's just see if it's rolling out here. It is. Yeah, it hasn't, Chef hasn't kicked in and actually changed any of the boxes yet, but it'll, it'll happen. Uh. Um, but once we have that, I will build a Grafanet NFS dashboard after this, but um, it's kind of difficult to do if you don't have any data. So I'll, I'll wait for that to, to roll out. Um, well, if we want to record that, that's fine as well. Um, Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my dirty secret because I happen to like GUIs. Oh no. Dude, it's so much better. I can like oh, review no. everything and I can click because <laughs> I, I find it as a review tool, it's just fantastic for me. 
I don't know. It's like in my mind is how I like need to, when I have like a change of logic. Which one is that? It's um, source tree. Oh, source tree. Yeah. So I just, let me just, uh, so that, that one's really basic. Like you can't really mess that one up too much. 800, 400, 1500, 1500. This one, NFS, NFS. NFS, NFS. Um, this in the yeah, that's good. That's a different thing I'm going to put together, like a script for loading into BigQuery. So maybe you don't have to know. So this is 1500. Maybe we just bring this up while we talk about that. I'm going to put this on a screen. So we got 1500 read, so that's read, 1500 uh, type equals NFS, uh, 1500 write type equals NFS, and then 400 write type equals NFS, and 800 read type equals NFS. And then lowering the, the thresholds a little. Cool. Um, add in this uh, disk saturation. And that's all we really need there. Cool. And then um, once that's in, if we ever get saturation on those NFS disks again, we'll get alerting and yeah. we'll get, um, you know, these, we'll get this coming through here. We will get them showing up on capacity planning as well because they're part of the framework now. So when, oh, my machine is really struggling. So, so when that is, 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 is looking like it's gonna be saturated in the next 14 days, even if it's not yet, we'll get it here. Okay. Um, and if that's interesting, that's a new one that's come on recently. The disk space on the API. Anyway, the API. so we'll have all of this stuff kind of come through and um, it kind of, it all fits together quite nicely. Yeah, look at that. Wow. I think you see, this, it, it works. Um, I think we should get Hendrik to, I'll just switch this over to, so I'm just gonna say from saturation detail, I'll go to disk space saturation detail. And then from this graph, we can see exactly where it is. Where on the other graph, there's yeah, always a yeah. interpolation step, interpretation step. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll ping uh, Hendrik on this. There you go. So it is API02. 02? API02 and API24. API02 is. Human, we isn't it? Played with it yesterday, though. Yeah, it went up at. Yeah, that's probably something that someone's done on there. And it's because it's kind of staying pretty static. Uh, for you me. know what it could be? Yeah. It could be um, we downgraded there. So we had um, to download a new package and install a new package and all of that. So it sounds like um, something Hendrik can look into. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Should and I just upload this as it is? Yeah, upload it as it is. I think it, there is a lot of interesting things in here and I learned a couple of new things. So that's yeah. good. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, uh, thanks for doing it. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.